Hello, my name is Abe, and welcome back to the Darkest Dungeon. I think I've got a party created for the Cove. We're defeating the champion level Siren. Ugh, this is not the right order, it always does this. We've got a bounty hunter who has the Sun Ring and the Cleansing Crystal. The cultist who has Junia's Head and the Baron's Lash for debuff resistance. Houndmaster with another Sun Ring and the Ancestor's Mustache Cream. And the Arbalist with the Ethereal Crucifix and the Debuff Charm. You may have noticed a theme, Debuff Resistance. Because apparently, theoretically, you can resist the Siren's Call with Debuff Resistances. So I have it stacked as high as I can get it on everyone. Arbalist excluded, she has the weakest Debuff Resistance. The Occultist, 195% with the Baron's Lash, which I suppose is fine. I mean, his base chance is 30. <laughs> What does that look like if I remove this? 120, still higher than the Arbalist. So I could give the Occultist something else besides a debuff resistance. So let's do that actually. No one else has the curse, so I don't really feel like giving anyone else anything from him, but I could give him the candle or I could give him, you know, something that improves his healing skills even further. Let's do that instead. Cool, so we are ready to go. I expect this to be relatively difficult. Um, but hopefully we can just make it work. It's a pretty good item for debuff resistance. But really, you need it for this fight, for that plus 50% minus stress. Uh, it's a marking party, so hopefully we will be able to apply a mark on the Siren and kill her pretty quickly. I do believe she only has two attacks per turn, if I remember correctly. Cool, let's do it. Uh, we need to bring along a lot of bandages in case we come across those big ol' crabs that can really be a pain in our asses. Let's make sure that we have as many bandages as possible, a couple of things of blood. He's not craving or wasting, but we'll bring a couple along anyways. A couple of stacks of torches, shovels, um, yes, holy water. Honestly, actually, the holy water is really good for the fight as well. Hmm. Because it improves our resistances. Actually gonna make a change here. I'm actually gonna actually gonna go back, and I will give him the Baron's Lash. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? There, at the bottom. Uh, because I'm gonna be giving everyone else a hit of the, uh, the Holy Water before we go into the mission, so everyone should have like 140% base debuff resistance, theoretically. So yeah, let's give him the Baron's Lash, that way he's at 195. The plus four speed also does help because then he can apply the mark opening up the combat every time. So all the food, stack of torches, uh, all the bandages that we can afford to bring. Four holy water should be enough. I'm not gonna give it to him. The occultist, Omond, because he has the curse. I don't think it would hurt him because for some reason it never seems to when I do it, but I'll bring along some medicinal herbs as well. Uh, maybe... Eh, no anti-venom. I never use the anti-venom when I bring it. Blood, don't forget. We've got the dog treats. Don't need laudanum, don't need the cure. Actually, you know, I could give the cure to Omond and then not have to worry about his debuff resistances at all, but honestly, this is fine, I think. Um, so, here we go. Yeah, we don't need anti-venom. Nothing blights as far as I can remember. Under the blood moon I lured my wide-eyed prey to the pier's edge. Before she could properly appreciate her position, I clamped on a manacle, chaining her to the leering idol. A small push was sufficient to send both into the icy waters. And when at length the tide receded, Jewels of the most magnificent grandeur lay scattered upon the shore. What a jerk. I always wondered what became of the unfortunate little whiff. Well, I guess we're gonna find that out, aren't we? Infamous Cutthroat, Brigand Raider, huh? I guess the Brigand Raider is just slightly, slightly better than the infamous Cutthroat. I wonder if the reason why this guy's here is because we've done the Wolves at the Door, or 
or what? Because <laughs> it's kind of weird that he's there. Uh, I think I can just pull this guy forward, though. We have a 140 base chance. It'll hit for damage, but if it pulls him to the front, then he can only do his rushed shot ability. And we might even just be able to kill him, like, immediately? Yeah, it seems pretty pretty good. He's kind of a nasty damage dealer, so knocking him out early is quite nice. And yeah, let's get rid of the Brigand Raider. Oh, nice crit. Dude, if we can do this every turn, getting two kills, that would be awesome. Nasty crit, we're gonna have to start healing immediately, unfortunately. He's got pretty low speed though, so we should be able to open up with healing of our own. Uh, you might as well heal yourself. Because the Bounty Hunter has got a little bit more actual HP than you do. Um, get a Battlefield Bandage out. Because I think I can punch this guy with the Bounty Hunter to pretty much get a guaranteed uh, stun. So that basically gives us a guaranteed turn or free turn of just doing whatever the hell we want. So there we go. It's got like a hundred and... 65% base, so like a 95% chance of actually landing. Now we can uh, pull him forward. Clearing the corpses. Going for a hit, and it's not that much damage, but it's enough that Bounty Hunter can get the kill. And it's not fully stress relieving every everyone, you know, we got crit, which was pretty nasty, but we can deal with the stress as we go. Now this is annoying. I don't want people to get the curse here. Because I want to be able to use the... I want to be able to use the... Uh, the holy water on people without having to worry about them at all. That's not that much damage. I mean, they do have a lot of protection, but I was expecting, expecting a little bit more than that. Uh, I suppose we could try to, like, uppercut one of these mosquitoes, but we could also just go for a hit. Continue nice crit. Perfect. I feel much better about the decision to start on that Cavalier now. Yeah, and this is the problem with having a um, Houndmaster for stress relief, is that if they stack it up on one person, it doesn't help. Well, now he can do a, a stress relief attack or stress relief ability. That's fine, he already has the curse. They're getting a lot of turns, so she has a surprising amount of disease resistance thanks to that Corvid's Resilience perk, or whatever the hell it is. So I don't mind her getting that attack. Or getting that hit in. Or getting hit, I should say. Bounty Hunter needs to be healed. Healed him for two. <sighs> it's gonna be one of those days, huh? Press this advantage. Give them no quarter. And I don't want to, uh, oh my god, I don't want to do a stress heal because I want to kill these guys. We're getting hit pretty hard. Thirst. Don't give him the curse. Oh, come on, please do some decent healing for once in your life. Go for the hit. That's acceptable. Pretty much exactly what I needed right there. Now the occultist can heal the arbalist, who is still getting hit. We can do some stress healing. Good, 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 good. Slowly, gently. This is how a life Please heal the arbalist. Good. I don't care, honestly, for anyone else except for her, but there's no way I can control whether or not she's going to get the stress relief. Good crit, though, for even more stress relief. These nightmarish creatures can be, can felled. be felled. They, they can, can be beaten. beaten. And I might as well just hold on to the bandage. I'll pop it as soon as anybody gets bled, which will happen here because this infamous blood letter will bleed. Okay, do we go for the mark, or do we go for the pull? I think I go for the mark and try to knock out this blood letter. Because with three units having double damage attacks against him, we have a pretty decent chance of killing him in the first attack. And he's got zero dodge, so now we hit him for 33. 
We hit him for 19 and the bleed, and then we hit him for 14. So he is not dead. He's dead on his next turn because the bleed will kill him. That's kind of unfortunate, but what are you gonna do? So there's the bleed. We'll go ahead and use the bandage here. You can shank the back line? Good God. She's gonna get the, uh, the bandage, actually. She needs the heal. Okay, now he's gonna get the bandage. Wait, already used his turn. Ah, never mind. Uh, yeah. That's a really weak bleed. I, can't, I never remember that it's a really weak bleed, but it really is. The ground quakes. Can't stun the cutthroat, but we can at least finish him. Hopefully he does get another turn to heal himself. I guess, you know, he's got the plus four speed from the uh, the Lash. He's basically going first every turn. From our side of the field anyways. Go for the stun. Yeah, basically a 95% chance of landing. As a result, we could do, you know, a little bit of healing. Stress healing. Good, continue to get that stress. Healed on the Arbalist. Healed for zero, lovely. I mean, that's why you gotta spend your time healing now, you know? Because if you fail here, it's, you know, less important. It's less uh, of a problem. But if you get that zero healing when someone is bleeding and on death's door, that's a problem. So that worked out wonderfully. Success so clearly in view, or is it merely a trick, a trick of, of the light? light? Who wants to remove a quirk? Minus damage on ranged skills. That is pointless. Will only flagellate. Pointless. Thin blooded is kind of annoying. Let's see if we can't remove thin blooded using one of the holy waters. Ah, eh, bad gambler removed. Unfortunate, but that's the dice roll you roll. I really should have had a uh the trap maker's art. His efficacy unwitnessed by his own eyes. I really should have had a uh something that gives me a better scouting chance and trap disarmament, but decided against it. Look where it led me. Good people are getting trapped left and right. At least it didn't raise his uh, stress all that much. And it didn't hurt him all that much. Really, I just needed to use a uh, medicinal herbs on him. Decimated. Ooh, glad I used that attack. I was basically thinking, though, why open with like a targeted attack or a, a mark or a heal or a pull? Just go for a hit. They're Eldritch, he does bonus damage against Eldritch. Ended up working out. And actually, we got two of them killed already, damn. Now they're gonna do a lot of damage. These guys do a lot of damage. Which is kinda scary, but we can we can heal. He's on death's door. Yeah, lovely. But we got healed for at least 20. He might go on death's door again, though, depending on how hard these guys want to hit him. Oh my god! It's insane! I mean, hopefully we can kill one of them. So, let's try to stun the other one. A singular strike. Kinda wished it wasn't the front guy who was still here, because I can bola. Impressive. And hopefully use the dog to get the kill. Good, so I, I have a turn to heal. To heal a couple of times, honestly. And we can do some stress relief. I don't want her to attack because she has a pretty decent chance of like crit killing or something, but I guess I'll use him to do it. This is fine. Get that emergency battlefield bandage. 
yield for three. I mean, it's three that we didn't have before, but still not that good. Really need a camp, actually. It's kind of sad having to camp this early, but... <laughs> Another combat. At least we surprised him, so hopefully we'll get a kill. Yeah, go ahead. I'll let the Arbalist take the shot at the Tide Master in the back. She's got a pretty decent chance of critting, nearly 20%, so, you know, we had a chance of getting a one-hit kill on him. I don't worry about the stress all that much, it's really damaged, so killing that guy who could do the Seaward Slash is, I think, smart. That's a debuff, if it lands. I guess the only thing the Maggot can do is that debuff, which is pretty good. Okay, he's dead, so now it's just the Stinger. I don't really want him to stun me, if at all possible, so I'll try to probably kill him first. Not only because the Arbalist can actually hit him. Uh, we do have a decent chance of stunning them. I think this is when I take the opportunity to try to do some healing and stress relief. You know, they've only got a Maggot and a Stinger. You know, they've got pretty weak attacks. I can kind of maybe get some extra healing done here. You know what? Pop the bandage. Good, everyone's getting healed up. Stress is fine, but let's keep it fine. Yeah. I could pop the, you know, battle battlefield bandage on the Arbalist, but I think I'm okay with uh, just letting the Occultist heal for now, getting some stress healing with the Houndmaster. I could have given Houndmaster his Lick Wounds ability, but I never remember and I never use it. <laughs> I guess we'll mark the Maggot. I mean, good crit. But if we mark him, we can do some extra damage. He's dead on his next turn, so we don't need to worry about the Maggot anymore. Don't get bled again. I just used a bandage on you. Good crit. Honestly, with the crits, maybe we don't need to focus on stress relief at all. Might as well uh, delay so I can get more healing done. Like this guy's gonna do what? Five points of damage? Four. We can heal for way more than that. Hey, 29. I was waiting for the game to make a liar out of me. Heal for like three, and it's like, oh well, okay. Technically true, game. Technically true. We did not heal for that or more. Okay, we good? We good. Remind yourself that this is not a loot run, and even though I am kind of exploring. <laughs> Going to all the rooms before I even worry about fighting the boss. We should probably beeline the boss, let's be honest. We can camp just before the boss fight. And if we have extra health, extra stress, uh, we can keep exploring. But I definitely don't want to, you know, have my resolve tested before we even get that far. The way is lit. Oh my the god. Is clear. We require only minus dodge, the minus speed. It. I don't really want to use another medicinal herbs. I don't really want to have to get rid of the rubies, but I guess we'll get rid of the rubies. <laughs> I'll use another medicinal herb, why not? You'd think he'd, he'd resist the debuff with 195% chance of doing so. I guess it was a trap. Oh no. They're surprised. If I get lucky, I can get two kills. Figure hit close enough so that the uh, bounty hunter can actually get in at an attack. Oh no, we're gonna get one kill. Shit. 
This is where the danger lies. Seaward Slash does a lot of damage, times three. Spearfishing moves? Grievous Crit's super annoying. Palpable fear. At least they spread out their attacks. Thank God for that. Yes, you gotta heal. As much as, as, much as I would like to attack with you. Death's door. Shit. Can we get an attack, please? Thank you. So they've all moved. We are going to pop the heal on the Arbalist to keep him off of Death's door. And honestly, I think we go for the stun. It's basically 100%. It is 100%. Knocks one unit out for one turn. If they spearfish, hopefully they spearfish our back line, allowing me an opportunity to heal. And there we go. Healing complete. Destroy. Nice. Thank you. Um, you might as well, like, mark him. But you might as well move. So I'm I'm going to spend a moment here healing, I think. Can we get one heal out? I can. Uh, you gotta heal yourself. For three. Lovely. Good dodge though. So now I am gonna try to get another stun out. I was just gonna go for the kill, but we have a moment. Let's take it. Now the Arbalist is going to heal the Occultist, and the Occultist will heal the Bounty Hunter, and the Bounty Hunter will kill. Heal for 10. That's enough, because that basically puts him at full health. Disease, Charm, another Ruby. So at this point, I should have taken the Rubies. Ruby, 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 Ruby! Might want to get rid of the Torches. Ah, uh, there is a secret room, so we will be backtracking here, picking up a lot of loot. And there's no encounters in front of us. So yeah, let's get rid of the, the two torches, the take of a stack of rubies, or at least one ruby. We'll push forward, we'll camp at the end of this section. This guy's gotta have, yeah, 100% chance. We'll camp, we'll buff. Heal up a little bit. Go fight the boss. No reason to interact with Curios. Hunger is fine. Would be nice if I could get a scout. No, that's okay. Camp. Huddled together. Eat eight food. Furtive Fifteen stress bundle. on the occultist Rats is it. Maze. Self only. Accuracy and crit. Bounty Hunter. Well, prevent nighttime ambush, that's first. Increase the damage of the Arbalist. One companion plus 20% damage, but increases his own stress. I think we... Buff the damage. Uh, you know, I think we should just focus on accuracy and crit. Because if someone does get taken by the siren, if I if I fail my debuff resist rolls, I don't want them to have a damage bonus that they're going to use to, you know, kill me. But then again, with the accuracy and crit, that's basically what's going to happen. But as long as I use the holy water before I walk into the fight, hopefully we don't get the debuff at all. So let's buff the accuracy and crit. Increase your own damage, sure, why not? Then I'll reduce, you know, his stress to zero. Sure. The match is strong. Gave ourselves a little a bit of a buff. Star is born. Minus one. Now I could pop medicinal herbs to reduce her, or to raise her speed up a little bit, but her speed is honestly all right, I think. If only gold, why not? The flow of other worldly corruption. Okay, there's not even any combat here. So, one holy water, one holy water, one holy water, 
Everyone's debuff resist is 143% or higher. Let's do it. There's a siren. Open with the mark. Reduce their dodge. Resisted the debuff, but, you know, the mark landed. Pop the dog treat. Now his damage is ridiculous. Crit for 51. Song of Desire. 160% chance to resist it. He resisted it. There we go. Hit for 28. The other reason why this is good is because it uses up her turns trying to land the debuff, you know? Crit for 59, she's already over half dead. And we still have two rounds of buff. Dude, sure. Crit for 29. <laughs> Another hit for 28 from the Bounty Hunter. Another hit for 19 from the Houndmaster. Surprisingly, our speed seems to be pretty good too. She resisted the debuff and... Almost dead, not quite. Pressure crash, this is gonna be stress. A little bit of stress on everyone, but the uh, Houndmaster should be able to recover that. There we go, the Siren is dead. <laughs> that was incredibly quick and incredibly easy. Accuracy if in position four, minus two speed. We have things that improve the accuracy of people like the uh, Ancestor's pistol, we don't need a sniper's ring. We don't really need the uh, leper's amulet either, so let's get rid of that, I suppose. And close. And continue adventuring. That was super easy, holy cow. You know, thank you cleansing crystals and stuff, because that's basically why I brought this stuff along. Uh, I mean, in fact, I could give her the sniper's ring. She's gonna have an even lower speed, but her speed is already low. So whatever. And I'm not gonna use the, the medicinal herbs on her. I wanna save those just in case we come across a curio that will let me uh, get rid of a negative quirk on someone. Packs laden with loot. Are often Packs laden with wise. torches. But yeah, that is uh, that was a surprisingly easy fight, but that's why I wanted to bring along all this debuff resist stuff. Because apparently that's purchase, a debuff attack, and if we can resist it, and purpose is made clear. Then we basically, you know, completely negate the thing with that fight. Uh, this is a pool that if you use anti-venom on, you get like a heal and a small stress relief, but we don't need it. Really, I'm just looking at the curios. Another one. You know what? Just backtrack. In Radiance, may we find victory. We got five stress backtracking, whatever. No, 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 no. Might as well use the shovel here. Uh, do I want this gold? Yes. I don't want to get rid of anything else. That debuff charm, I mean, it helped. Oh, right. <laughs> We're not in the room yet. You know, it's only plus 20% debuff re resist. It's not like the Ancestor's Mustache Cream or anything. Whatever works. Ah, it is a negative quirk removing curio. That was completely unnecessary. Suppose we'll just open up with an attack so we can kill this guy a little bit faster. Uh, we'll leave this this giant crab monster for the end, I suppose. Try to kill the maggot, yeah. The bleed would be nice, because he's got so much protection. Arterial pinch, this is what the bandages are for. Good dodge, though, good dodge. A death by inches. By inches. All right, apply the mark. Reduce his dodge. I could reduce his protection, but I think it's probably better just to go for hits. Uh, actually, you know what? The Houndmaster can do that. He reduces protection by a greater degree. So now he should hit for a lot of damage. 
resisted the bleed. Nice job. Might as well go for the attack. He does good damage against Eldritch monsters. Their cursed champion falls. And their cursed champion falls. Cool. So now who do I want to remove a quirk from? Probably the Houndmaster. Yeah, Thin-Blooded is still something that I want to get rid of. So there we go. Is there going to be a scout? Oh, no. Well, it's a room battle, so we got to do this first. Don't... Okay, you know what? That's fine. You marked him. I can hit him. Hopefully kill him. I, I was kind of hoping to be able to, like, pull the shaman forward or something. You know, I probably would have marked. Uh, actually, I probably would have attacked, to be honest. Good crit, though. Um... Yeah, let's... Oh, speed of two, her speed is three. I could go for a stun, but we can do that next turn. Let's go for the hit. And if my um, Arbalist moves before they guard him, I can kill him. Good. For more stress relief as well. We've got plenty of bandages. But this guy will have to start doing some healing. I did not bandage. I keep I keep doing that. I keep forgetting that I need to actually bandage before my action. 95% chance of stunning, removes the guard. Uh, and then we should probably mark and reduce the protection. Reducing that protection is really big. Especially when he's just going to activate another mark with or activate more protection we could stack up the protection but I think we're just gonna go for the kill now okay use the bandage don't forget this time well struck. I don't know why he keeps critting I guess he's got like a, a bonus crit chance oh no that just has a plus 12% base crit that is a lot you're dead he does have a high stun resistance but I thought we would try it anyways because he's got 75% protection. Now he doesn't, but he had 75% protection. I figured, you know, let's just go for the hit. A devastating blow. We're actually critting through the protection quite nicely. Um, we'll mark. Doubles the damage of essentially everyone. Quite doubling the damage of ever everyone, but pretty close. Octocestus. Octocestus, Octocestus. Another crit! Stress is not a problem on this party! Foolish horrors. Brought right, low. low. And driven into the mud. We don't need to worry about the uh, statue buff at all, even if it gives us a buff, because we are done! The only thing left is the secret door. We're out of food. If we starve, we starve. But I want the. You know, like eight, nine thousand, ten thousand gold from the secret door right now. I did bring a key, right? Yeah, I brought too many keys. There we go. Treasure. Waiting to be spent. Nice. Good job, team. Good job. Made short work of the boss. We picked up some sculptor's tools, which I imagine might be helpful at some point in the future. Siren's Conch for debuff resistance and minus 15% stress. Probably not going to be that beneficial because I think that's the biggest debuff boss, but there might be something else that we might want to use this on. Basically an ancestor's mustache cream, but with a stress reduction instead of a stress increase. Warren's Explorer replaced Nymphomania. The Fitz and Slugger replaces Second Wind. <sighs> the dog counts as a ranged attack, so the Slugger on the Houndmaster is not that good. The Fitz, we'll get that removed. Zoophobia, we'll get that removed. Gambler, we'll get that removed. Tough, plus 10% max HP is pretty good. I might even lock that in. It's not as good as Hard Skinned. But it does make them live a little bit longer. I remember days when the sun shone and laughter could be heard from the tavern. Yeah, 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 whatever. So, what are we gonna do next? 
Um, da -da -da -da. probably honestly go back to the courtyard. We don't really need a super good party. Well, unless we come across the crocodile. We need a party that can kill the crocodile if they come across it, but the party can still function, you know, for a few rooms, get some loot, come back, make some progress. We don't need to have a, a super good party for that. So what would we do if we were gonna do that? Probably Arbalist. Being able to hit any position works very nicely. They still have an emergency he heal. Uh, the Bounty Hunter would work nicely. Good damage, can hit all positions except for the back. And the Mark is not that bad for killing the Croc. It's actually not. I do worry about having, you know, an Occultist Healer, but with an Arbalist backing it up, maybe, maybe that would work. I think we would definitely run a Plague Doctor. Incision can do some decent damage, especially if we rock them with that good herb. They have a pretty nice stun res or a stun ability as well, which would be good, and they have Battlefield Medicine, which heals and cures Bleed and Blight for a couple of units, which is very good. What else? Is this Myron? This is Gufar. Where's Myron? Oh, there's Myron. Yeah, we should use Myron, because they're level 6. Uh, Grave Robber could be nice. They can hit essentially everywhere except for the front row, but then we can just use Poison Darts or Pick to the Face. And then we would need a healer. So is this what we would run? Ugh, it seems pretty awkward. If we run protection on the occultist, then maybe this will be fine. But honestly, fragile, satanophobia, flawed release, hagiomania. We need to remove some of these quirks. My god. I guess we're going to use Omond instead of Darcy. Yeah, this could work. Put some... Uh, some protection so that they don't die in like one hit. <laughs> Maybe even the Ancestor's Bottle or increase their uh, health by a lot. We do have minus 10% due to the Crimson Curse. Really? Minus 10% HP from the Crimson Curse? Oh, that's surprising. They'll be a really kind of crappy healer, but ideally, you know, if someone has Bleeding or Blighting, the Plague Doctor would help out. So something like this. Uh, the Arbalist would just do damage. This isn't, isn't really a marking party, but it is a party that might be able to kill the uh, the croc if they run across it. So I'll figure out what party I want to bring along to the courtyard. We'll go back and continue our adventures there. So thank you very much for watching. Like the video if you enjoyed it, subscribe for more, and I hope to see you here for the next mission in the Darkest Dungeon.